Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about some of the more interesting recent discoveries coming from NASA from this beautiful Parker Solar Probe. Let's talk about what they've discovered and welcome to What The Math. In the last few years, NASA launched quite a lot of very interesting missions, but one of the more interesting uh, recent missions was of course the so-called Parker Solo Probe. And just like previous solar missions that NASA has launched over the years, the Parker Solar Probe is essentially meant to investigate the activity very, very close to the actual surface of the Sun. But unlike other missions that mostly are responsible for just looking at the Sun and looking at various effects, the Parker Solar Probe is of course different. And what makes Parker Solar Probe so different is of course the fact that it's going to be the closest object to the Sun that we've ever launched. In other words, unlike other probes that are just looking at the Sun, it's going to actually try to physically experience what it's like to be so close to this beautiful object. The closest approach is going to happen in December of 2024, so essentially um, five years from when I'm making this video. And if you are watching this in the future and it's December 2024, um, cool. Anyway, so this is what the probe uh, sort of looks like. This is the simulation using Universe Sandbox. And this is what the Sun is going to look like when it approaches it at a distance of about 7 million kilometers, which is about uh, four times closer than uh, the distance that it currently has. In other words, it's actually going to move a little bit closer. Now, if you don't really know much about the orbital dynamics or basically how orbits work in space, well, all you need to know is that it's going to be using Venus, which is right here, as you can see, to try to lower its orbit even more than it currently um, has. So in other words, it's not really using any engines. It's not using any kind of fuel or very, very little fuel um, to try to basically move as close to the sun as it can. Now, there's an old video I made many years ago explaining how this works. Essentially, this is known as the so-called gravity assist or the gravity slingshot maneuver and you can see how Voyager right here used this maneuver several times to try to gain as much velocity as possible. So this is a very well known phenomenon to us and we usually use this for um, craft to use the gravity itself as a way to accelerate or decelerate instead of using actual fuel. So, in about five years time, Parker Solar Probe is going to discover a lot of new things about the Sun, but even now, NASA has already released four new papers describing some of the very unusual findings, and very surprising findings. Now, in a nutshell, what the NASA has discovered is that this nearby space, very close to the Sun, is an extremely different environment, as we kind of thought it would be, but not to the extent that we imagined. And in some sense, NASA even compared this to a kind of a waterfall and river um, phenomenon. So in other words, let's just say that somewhere right here, this is going to be Earth. And what we're seeing here, the flow of water, is basically most of the solar system. And the water itself here represents various solar wind and um, magnetic interaction created by our sun. In other words, it's the flow of particles and various solar winds generated by the sun itself. So where the probe is right now would be equivalent of this, the kind of a bottom tip of the waterfall, whereas this here would be the surface of the sun. So it's seeing all of this extreme interaction happening in real time and has discovered some unusual properties of the solar wind so close to the sun itself. So first of all, it discovered that um, the wind itself is extremely fast here. As a matter of fact, when the probe was passing through the wind, it seemed to have discovered winds that were 15 to 20 times faster than we anticipated. So the actual particles move here at up to about 50 kilometers per second velocity. And it also discovered these unusual, um, very kind of strange and very large waves that you can see are being formed, which the scientists refer to as a kind of a solar tsunami. So basically here it passed through these waves, through these reversal waves um, that were detected by the probe and were exceptionally powerful and very, very large in size. These are a type of a, what's known as an alpha wave. 
which are essentially waves formed by the interaction of various particles. This is what we thought they're going to look like, but instead they looked much larger and much more extreme. And on top of this, not only were these waves really large, there was also a lot of turbulence here, with speed suddenly changing quite dramatically. In other words, the waves themselves would suddenly accelerate or decelerate by up to about 300,000 miles per hour, or about 450,000 kilometers per hour. And all of this would happen almost instantly, within only seconds. So this is a very turbulent, extremely, extremely powerful environment. And because of these sudden unusual changes in speed, the scientists believe that maybe this is why the coronal region, this region very close to the sun, is so exceptionally hot. It's actually several thousand times hotter than the sun's surface itself. In other words, if you were to look at our sun and if you were to look at this region right here, it would be millions of degrees as opposed to the sun's surface that's only a few thousand degrees. And so NASA scientists think that maybe it has something to do with these turbulent uh, regions that they just discovered. They also discovered some of the more unusual properties of the way that solar wind is generated, and it seems that it's a lot more hectic and unpredictable than we thought. We thought it was kind of like more or less equivalent everywhere, it sort of spreads just like you expect the water here to spread, um, more or less sort of peacefully and across the entire river, whereas in reality it seems to be really hectic, there seem to be these holes all over the sun's surface that release a lot of different solar wind that does spread spread across the entire area and then sort of adds up to creating the solar wind that we observe here on Earth. And at the same time, so close to the sun, the solar wind also seems to be spinning with the sun. In other words, as the sun rotates, so do all of these solar particles and solar wind very close to the sun. And then eventually, as it reaches further points, that's when it separates from the sun and then begins being transmitted across the rest of the solar system. But in these uh, close regions, several million kilometers away from the sun, it seems that everything is sort of attached and spins with the sun itself. And just like everything else in this region, it's more or less magnetically connected. So these are not gravitational connections, these are all electromagnetic connections that are formed by the very strong magnetic fields so close to the sun. At the same time, it was very surprising for the scientists to discover that apart from having large emissions, like for example what we would call a solar flare, which would be very large and very easily visible from Earth, there also seem to be these really, really small emissions, very small flares that we never would detect otherwise. And the Parker Solar Probe was able to see these small emissions, very tiny flares that don't really affect Earth almost at all, but do uh, produce enough emissions close to the Sun, thus affecting some of the nearby regions. It might actually affect planets like Mercury and even Venus, but doesn't really affect Earth at all. Another unusual discovery was that throughout its time close to the sun at a distance of about 24 million kilometers from the sun, the craft was actually being bombarded by various tiny particles. And NASA believes these tiny particles come from various comets and asteroids that came a little bit too close to the sun and essentially got destroyed over time. In other words, there's a lot of material that's being um, sort of evaporated and released from various asteroids, uh, like this series right here that I just added in Universe Sandbox, that then produce this gas that spreads across the solar system. And the Parker Solar Probe was able to detect all of this. But uh, the simulation I created here is actually a little bit unrealistic because the dust I added is a little bit too close to the sun. One of the major discoveries uh, from Parker Solar Probe so far is that there seems to be a dust-free region denoted by this ring, this orbit right here that you see. This is about 5 million kilometers away from the sun. And there's basically no dust here. Everything is or has been evaporated and destroyed. So... Um, all of this is pretty much empty of matter, or actually the only matter that is here is coming from the sun itself, possibly things inside the solar wind. Nothing in here is from the rest of the solar system. But it's very likely that even at its closest, the solar probe will never really reach this region to explore it a little bit more. So in other words, the probe will always have a little bit of dust hitting it and will never be in dust-free region. Now these are not the only discoveries, but I think these were some of the biggest ones, and I'm sure there will be a lot more in the next year or so as the probe gets closer and closer to the sun itself. And the reason it's going to take um, basically five years for it to reach the closest part of the orbit 
is because it depends on Venus to lower its orbit. And so it actually has to align its own orbit that you see in white here with the orbit of Venus that is in um, yellow. And so basically uh, by timing the orbital alignments, that's when the probe gets to experience this slingshot maneuver that I mentioned previously. And that's how it gets to come closer and closer to the sun. Now, in the next five years, we'll probably find a lot more about the sun, but the most important part of this whole mission is, of course, for us to learn more about the solar wind and how our sun is able to generate these solar flares and everything else that affects us here on Earth. As I mentioned in one of the previous videos, I personally believe that solar flares are literally the most dangerous thing that can happen to our society today. So by studying the solar wind and how solar flares are generated, the Parker Solar Probe will hopefully allow us to find a way to prevent a serious disaster from striking planet Earth. If you haven't seen the video I made previously, check it out on the channel as well. It should be popping up somewhere above my head. But essentially, this here could one day end our civilization. Solar flares are extremely dangerous. But anyway, we'll talk more about this in some of the future videos. And most importantly, we'll talk more about the discoveries of the beautiful Parker Solar Probe in some of the future videos as well. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences and come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before. Also, maybe consider supporting this channel Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.